Okay, everybody, this is covering section 10.5. Main thing here is once again, just like all the previous sections, uh, write down the formulas. <laughs> um, definitely want to use uh, the formulas arc length, area, uh, in polar coordinates. All right. So here's the formula area in polar coordinates. Area equals one half integrating uh, the function squared d theta. Or you can say r squared d theta, where r is the function. All right, find the area of one petal of the rose curve given by three cosine theta. So we wanna find this area. And if you look at this line and this line, they let you know that this is pi over six and this is negative pi over six. So obviously we're gonna integrate from negative pi over six to pi over six. Um, and once again, the formula is three cosine three theta. If we come back up here to R, three cosine three theta. Plug it in and we square it. That's right into the formula. Uh, then you're gonna have to do a little trig. Yeah, you're gonna have to do a little trig here. Three cosine three theta times three cosine three theta. If you multiply these two together, you can actually go to your trig formula sheet, uh, product of some identities, cosine of three theta times a cosine of three theta. By the way, three times three is nine. So we're gonna take this, this three times three, three squared is nine. So we're bringing the nine to the outside and we're just, so we're not gonna worry about this three, we're just dealing with the cosine three theta, cosine three theta. And if you look at that formula on your trig sheet, product of some identities, uh, it shows the cosine of alpha times a cosine of beta equals one half, the cosine of alpha minus beta plus the cosine of alpha plus beta. So uh, alpha minus, this is alpha, this is beta. Alpha minus beta is zero. So the first one is one half uh, times uh, zero, cosine of zero, plus the cosine of three theta. Three theta is six theta. So, and the cosine of zero, if you look at your unit circle, once again, cosine of zero on our unit circle is one. So this changes to one. So it's one half times one plus cosine of six theta. And that's what we get, one plus the cosine of six theta. And there's a one half, we're gonna take the one half and bring it out and so so now it should be nine over four okay let's move on uh and then we're going to integrate so we are integrating uh, see there's the one half it came out to be a four so we're integrating one plus cosine uh, six theta integrating one uh, equals just theta. 
uh, cosine theta uh, integrating is sine six theta. And so u equals six theta, so du equals six. So in order to get a six, bring a six here. And that's u du. Uh, then you plug in pi over six and negative pi over six. And that's what you end up with. All right. Uh, points of intersection. If we have this function, r equals 1 minus 2 cosine theta, and a second function, r equals 1, which is just a circle, we want to find these points of intersection. Um, going back, just to show you, r equals this, and it also says r equals one, so why not just substitute this r equals one into there and make that a one? And that's what we do on the next slide. Here's our r equals one minus two cosine theta, and we know r equals one, so we just substitute one into here. Bring the one out and you end up with zero equals negative two cosine theta. Uh, divide both sides by negative two and you just get cosine theta equals zero. So when you take the one out and divide by negative two, you end up with cosine theta equals zero, which is at pi over two and three pi over two. To find R at those particular parts, R equals one minus two times a cosine of theta, plug pi over two in here first. Cosine of pi over two is zero. So you just end up with one. Uh, And the same thing for three pi over two, uh, you get the same thing, cosine of three pi over two is zero and you just get one. That wasn't too bad. Uh, so we found two points of intersection, but there were three. This is the third one we haven't did. Do you see um, negative one, zero? Right, here's the graph. That point there is negative one, zero. Since R equals one, And this equals all the way over to pi over two, a pi over two, just pi. So you get the coordinate one and pi, uh, the polar coordinate. Uh, 
and this is the rectangular coordinate. And I think there was one more thing we wanted to look at, arc length. Now the formula we have to write down the function squared and then the derivative squared, take the whole thing to square root it, finding the arc length. Another formula we have to have written down. So find the uh, length of the arc from zero to two pi for this function. And we're gonna plug it into the formula. Um, they show the derivative of this should be two sine theta. Derivative of cosine is negative sine. Lost where I was at. There's the derivative right here. So we plug in our function, square it, we plug in our derivative and square it and see what we end up with. There's our function, there's our derivative. And do a little math and you should get to this. Uh, it doesn't look like it's an easy fix, but um, a, watch how we do this. We can actually do this. Well, you'd have to, uh, yeah, you have to simplify. You have to go about and simplify that whole thing. I don't know. Do we want to do it? Give me a second. Okay, let's try this. Um, let's multiply this out. Two minus two cosine theta times two minus two cosine theta plus four sine squared theta. So this here, I square the two and I square the sine, and this is what I got. Here, two times two is four, and negative two cosine theta times two is negative four, so I get negative eight cosine theta, uh, and then I get plus four cosine squared theta. Don't forget this four sine squared theta. Well, this right here, if you factor out a four, is four times cosine squared theta plus sine squared theta. This equals one. So this is four times one, which is four. Four plus four is eight. Eight minus, so these two, this equals eight. And this, equal, I mean, four, this equals four. So it, they add up to eight uh, minus eight cosine theta. Um, and all this was in the square root, don't forget. Uh, if I factor out an eight and take it out of the square root, the square root of eight times one minus cosine theta. So the square root of eight is two square root of two. So that's how we get the two square root of two on the outside and one minus the square root of theta on the inside. 
Okay. So there's just, I mean, it's just, it's just algebra from that point there, just to uh, working it all out, simplifying it as it says there. Um, then you can go ahead and uh, one minus cosine theta, you can change it to this. They're using a trig identity. I'm going to leave the cue out of all these identities and everything in front of me. Uh, uh, this would be uh, Yeah, you'd have to look for this trig identity somehow to take this and get to that. So if you can get it to this, uh, a square root of two pops out. Square root of two, two, two times square root of two is two. Two times two is four. So we end up with that. And when you do this, you always want to try to get a square here because you have a square root. Square root and square cancel. And you're just left with the sine of theta over two. And then you integrate that. There's our integration. Plug in two pi and zero. And we get our answer. And they say, if you approximately, if you look at the radius of a, uh, a circle, a uh, circle with radius five over two, its circumference is 15.7, which is really close to the 16 that we got. And finally, the area of a surface of a revolution. And once again, uh, here are two formulas for that. If you're gonna do about the polar axis, you're gonna use uh, sine theta in the formula. You're gonna go about the line theta cosine theta here. So find the area of the surface formed by revolving r equals cosine theta about the line pi over two. Here's pi over two. Uh, so we're going to revolve this around pi over two. And you see, if you revolve it around pi over two, you create this donut. There's the formula. We're using the cosine, don't forget, because we're revolving over pi over two. And plugging everything into it. I'm going to leave that up to you to take a look at all this. There's the derivative. You know all this cosine squared plus sine squared changes all to one. Uh, so this is just cosine times cosine, which is cosine squared. That's what you're going to have to integrate. Uh, before you integrate it, let's change this, and it makes it an easier integration. Uh, 
All right, so that is section, the final section of Cal 2. Ten point five. Uh, we can take a look at some of the homework too. Let me get that out. Okay, so here's the homework for ten point five. Write the integral representing the area shaded in by the figure. Do not evaluate. So they just want you to fill in this. So obviously you're going to integrate from zero to pi over two. Six sine theta. And the formula says, so we're doing it from zero to pi over two, six sine theta formula says square it. So when you square 36, or when you square six, you get 36. 36 divided by two is 18. So this is what you're going to integrate. And remember, we can change this when we integrate this. It doesn't want us to integrate this, but we can change this to, to make it easier for us to integrate. Then there's something really similar. Here's our R, find the area. Once again, one half integration to R squared. Here's R. We convert the, the R. Um, we try to take this eight to the outside. Eight squared is 64. 64 divided by two is 32. So sine squared equals one minus cosine two theta over two. Uh, the two comes out, divide the 32 by two and you get 16 and then integrate this, you get theta here. Um, and then you this changes the cosine with the two, since that's u, the two comes down to the bottom. Then we plug the items in. So finding the area is not doesn't look too bad when it's this, a nice simple problem like that. Um, use the graphing utility. Those won't be on the test. Anything with graphing utility shouldn't be on the test. Points of intersection, find the points of intersection for those two functions. Um, to find the intersection, you have to make those two functions equal each other. Here are the two functions, right? Anytime you find the, the, the points of intersection, you wanna make them equal each other and then solve. You wanna know where they equal, where they're touching, where, the points of intersection are. So here we have the two functions equaling each other. Divide by five, that gets rid of that. So then you're left with one plus sine theta equals one minus sine theta. Uh, I can take uh, this to the other side and this to the other side. The ones cancel and I end up with sine theta plus sine theta equals zero. This is two sine theta. Uh, 
equals zero uh, divided by two. Sine theta equals zero. Uh, where is theta equal to zero for sine? It's at zero and pi over two. Oh, it's not at pi over two, it's at zero and pi, sorry. Yeah, right there, zero and pi. So we have our zero and our pi. Um, and then they show replacing r by negative r and theta by theta plus pi in the first equation solving. It gives you how, how they ended up. Here. And don't forget, there was, I mean, this was the one intersection they show. This was the other intersection they show, but there was one more right here at zero, zero. So there's one at five, zero. There's one at five and pi. And then there's one at zero, zero. And I'm not too worried about the problems that say use the graphing utility. I think on a test, if I put a question down for 10.5, it'll more than likely be like question two area of a region. It would be something like question two or question three. All right, I hope that helped. I'll post these uh, here in a little bit. You guys have a, a good day.